Let's take a look at how to perform dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis um, or the factor label method are just fancy ways of um, describing how to convert from one unit into another unit mathematically. So um, the whole idea behind dimensional analysis is that you need what's called a conversion factor. A conversion factor is really just an equality. Um, an equality that um, allows you to change units. So the idea is to be able, let's say you're converting between feet and inches. Um, I know that there is exactly 12 inches in one foot, right? Just think of a ruler, okay? Um, this is one foot, right? And it's also broken down into, um, by inches, also 12 inches. Um, it is the same exact length, but described in two different units. So one foot and 12 inches is the same exact length. That's why I could set them equal to each other. And I can turn this into a fraction that allows me to convert between inches and feet, putting whatever in the numerator and denominator that I might need for that particular problem. And we can do this with a whole bunch of measurements. You're trying to find measurements um, that represent the exact same measurement, but in different units. Okay? So let's say, for instance, I had um, five inches and I want to turn that into feet, um, I can multiply by a conversion factor. Um, and I can use the fact that there are 12 inches in one foot. Now, why do you think I put inches in the bottom for this conversion factor? I put inches in the bottom so that it can cancel out with whatever unit was there to start with, which was inches. So whatever has the same unit that I'm starting with, I'm going to put in the bottom so it cancels out. Mathematically speaking, it's like if I had x times y over x, um, the x and the x would cancel out, and I would successfully convert x into y. Um, so in this situation, the inches would cancel out. And I'm going to end up being left just in feet. I would be able to successfully convert from inches to feet. In my calculator, what am I doing? I'm doing 5 times 1, which is just 5, um, divided by 12. And I end up getting 0 0.4. Um, let's do two significant figures for now. Uh, significant figures is a whole nother lesson. So this is 0.42 and inches have canceled out so my unit is feet. So 5 inches is equal to 0.42 feet. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these um, conversions that we have here. So let's just take a look at this one. Okay, um, I'm always going to start by writing the number that I'm given with the unit I'm given, 75.22 milliliters. Okay, and I want to convert that into liters. Alright, so I need to multiply by a conversion factor. What unit do I want in the bottom? Alright, I want milliliters so that it can cancel out with the other milliliters. What unit do I want on top? I want liters because that's what I want to convert into. Do I know an equality about milliliters and liters? Do I know how many milliliters are in a liter? I do. In one liter, there's exactly 1,000 milliliters. It represents the exact same volume, but in different units. That's why it's an equality, and that's why it's um, a conversion factor. So in my calculator, all I'm doing, or in my head, because... Uh, we can do this in our heads as well. Um, we're doing 75.22 divided by 1,000, and we get 0 0.07522 liters. And this makes sense because it should be a smaller number because you can fit more milliliters than I can liters in this uh, volume. Now, a lot of the times, there's not just one conversion factor that nicely um, goes from my given unit to my desired unit. A lot of the times, I might need more than one conversion factor, and that is okay. I will just have uh, more than one fraction um, that I am multiplying by. So let's look at another example. Let's take a look 
at this one, days to seconds. So I'm going to start by writing 3.42 days, and I eventually want to get into seconds. And offhand, I don't know how many seconds are in a day, so let's break this down. What do I know about days? How can I break that down further? Okay, well, I know how many hours are in a day, right? So where do I want days, on top or on bottom? I want it on the bottom so that it'll cancel out. And I can turn this into hours instead. So how many hours are in a day? In one day, there's 24 hours. Okay, so now days cancel out. I'm in hours. I don't want hours, so I want seconds. Let's keep going. Some of you might know that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, but we don't have to use just one conversion factor. We can use two, so I'm going to break this down even more simply. Um, how many minutes are in an hour? Oh, okay, I know that. 60 minutes are in an hour. Where do I want hours? Oh, I want it on the bottom to cancel out with the unit on the top. Okay, and I can turn this into minutes. We said there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, but I don't want minutes, I want seconds. How many seconds are in a minute? Oh, there are 60. 60 times 60 is 3,600. That's why I said you can just use 3,600 seconds in an hour as well. Where do I want minutes? I want it on the bottom so that it'll cancel out with the minutes on top. Okay, and now I can turn minutes into seconds because there are 60 seconds in one minute. In my calculator, I'm multiplying by all the things on the top and then dividing by all the things in the bottom. There's only ones in the bottom, so this represents only multiplication. So 3.42 times 24 times 60 times 60, and I get a very large number. Let's round it to three significant figures, since there's three significant figures that I started with. This is 2.95 times 10 to the fifth, putting in scientific notation, seconds. Let's do another one. Now, sometimes you will have units in both the numerator and the denominator. So you will have to handle um, the numerator and denominator units separately. So let's start by writing 15. And let's write it so that I have meters actually in the numerator and seconds actually in the denominator. Okay. So let's pick whether we want to handle the numerator first or the denominator. You handle each of them separately. Okay, so let's just, for, it doesn't matter which one you pick to start with, let's just pick meters. Let's work by converting that first, okay? So we have 15 meters uh, per second. We want meters to turn into km, which is kilometers, okay? So we want a conversion factor that turns meters into kilometers. Where would I want meters? on the bottom. Where would I want kilometers? On the top. The reason why I want the meters to cancel out with the meters that are already there and I want to turn the numerator into kilometers so I want that on top. How many meters are in a kilometer? I know that there are a thousand meters in one kilometer. Okay. So that handles my numerator. Now I've got to look at my denominator. I have seconds in the denominator and I want hours instead. So again, I could handle this in more than one conversion factor since I did that already in the previous example. Let's use one conversion factor and it's a good one to know. You should know that there's 3600 seconds in an hour. It's just 60 times 60 essentially. Um, okay, so let's ask ourselves, where do we want seconds so that it cancels out? Now I want seconds in the numerator so it cancels out. So when I'm looking at the denominator unit, um, I need it to put the, it in the numerator in the conversion factor. We always need it in like kind of a diagonal place to cancel out. Um, and I want hours, that makes sense, because I want hours in the bottom in the denominator in the conversion factor because that's what I want the unit to be, kilometers per hour, hours in the denominator. That makes sense. We said there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And again, you could have done um, seconds to minutes and then minutes to hours, totally fine as well. So in my calculator, I'm doing 15 times 3,600 because those are in the numerator. And I am dividing by 1,000 and I get 54 
kilometers, which is left in the numerator, over hours, which is left in the denominator.